right now science wait, wait, well, scientist is hired by the public right so our funding and our positions the resources that we have as scientists like we, it, we or however much we feel we are disconnected from the rest of the world and we have a prestigious position to be this is all generated from public donation like taxpayer money public funding mm -hmm. so i think i would love to see the scientists being aware of it and trying to be more connected back to the society like mm -hmm. let's, let's come to the science communications part that i'm trying to say is when people are researching a lot of time you only discuss what you have found after the paper is published mm -hmm. And now we started to maybe have one step backward that people are allowed to publish um, before, like the manuscript mm -hmm. uh, before they are finally accepted. Mm -hmm. They can have a preprint to be published. But what I like to um, see is more uh, transparency in the communication of not only success, but also failure, but mm -hmm. also process, like. I, you, you can see my videos are very process driven and I am one. I'm, I might be too process driven to be a good scientist because I, I sometimes fail to have a burst eye view of the problem mm -hmm. because I'm too hung up by how to get my Excel sheet right or how I'm too hung up on how to get the technical part right. Mm -hmm. So, but I, um, in my in my recent uh, career, I actually have published in Jove, which is like Journal of Visualized Experiments. Oh. So, that was like a protocol that we re video recorded all this um, electron microscope and all these steps that we have to do so intricately in the lab. Mm -hmm. And they become like a, I don't know, five to seven minute video that another scientist from another country can see and they can relate to and they can know exactly how you handle the specimen. Mm -hmm. um, Jove has a bad rap because it's not cited enough. Like it has one... I remember it was like a stock market plummeting after I submitted the the, the, the impact factor went down from 1.4 to 1.1 and I don't I know see. even less and and everyone thought I was you know in in a sense it could be a way that people would say I'm wasting my time as a young postdoc because it spent me it, it was spending six months of my energy uh, writing the screenplay and editing and like yeah submitting a video for communicating how we do something. Mm -hmm. But to me, we can't have a new generation of scientists if we don't properly document how things are done. Mm -hmm. And PI is so busy. And when you get in the lab and things are not done exactly the way that was supposed to be done, they got angry and they're miscommunication. And students get frustrated because they are not getting the result that they are supposed to have. Mm -hmm. Mental illness comes in play when, well, you know, get mental illness when your re research work is working, right? So I think <laughs> what I think what's happening a, a lot of time is when students are not directed well enough in a transparent way, mm -hmm. and they have a lot of like vague room of how they should do the research, and if they are not good time manager, mm -hmm. and they are not good at managing expectation and delivering the result, they get miserable. Time can mm -hmm. fly by and PhD time is, you know, it, it, it a blink of an eye. You already spent seven years in, in the position and you still haven't graduated. And there yeah. are people like in such a situation just because of poor communication. And that's mm -hmm. why I am really passionate about documenting everything I can remember. You are also welcome to send me any clips that you think is important to submit to PhD COVID time with, mm -hmm. you know, we can feature your video. But like, you know, I'm serious about thinking this is a process, you know, dialogue on how do you mount the specimen on how, mm -hmm. you know, how did you analyze those image data? Mm -hmm. People don't have a, they, now we can, you know, the problem is we are not required and nobody mm -hmm. has time and space to do it. Absolutely. I'm not sure if this will happen in five to 10 years, though, because of how academic re uh, requirement is only narrower and narrower to metrics and return on interest is, uh, re you know, is, is, the, is the big expectation big behind, you know, if they give you one million dollar funding, they wanted yeah. like five papers and they don't care anything else.
what I what I wanted to to piggyback off was exactly what you're saying when it comes to the the, the scientists of the future being relying on the let's say algorithms of how to do certain certain things because in in PhD time I've I've also struggled with very poorly written protocols either in scientific papers or just in in the lab notebooks that I had to take a look at and definitely uh, that's a that's a something that's not going to change without really active effort on the part of academics on a part of just life science, life science community in the uh, overall. And uh, it seems like this is the biggest gap between, let's say, biology, biological sciences or and computer sciences. Because in computer sciences, you could just load an algorithm. That's how I like to think about it. And it would always work on any computer, regardless where it is in the world. But in right. science, if, it, if you do not have a particular algorithm where you define all the variables, you're never going to be able to get the same result or very unlikely. So... Coming back all the way to what we started talking about, which is, you know, one of your favorite videos is the lab taking notes. Do you feel like we will eventually get there where the way that we take notes and the way that we design our experiments, as well as share the data in a transparent manner between each other, all the way from conceptualizing idea all the way to the publication, is it going to change in our lifetime? When do you think is that shift will actually take place? So let's come to the concept of how policies got made and how policies could be influenced by stakeholders. Mm -hmm. PhD students who are watching this, you have to realize you are a stakeholder. You are generating this document. You are going to be, you have a say if some rules are going to be changed. And what I love to see is more of us taking a proactive action to, to document better in the lab. That's the basic that maybe no we don't even need a policy change but another thing you could do is to maybe if you work in nih and nsf the biggest if this video reaches a scientific program officer they could start drafting that is a requirement for all the funding receiving lab to document properly and they can send audit mm -hmm. you know companies got audited all the time why doesn't mm -hmm. scientific lab get audited mm -hmm. you know yeah. <laughs> so, do you do you feel do you feel do you feel scientists or let's say PhD students themselves would welcome that, especially early on because they have they're under so much pressure, or it just needs to be really maybe eased into this kind of really stringent environment and whether or not it actually stifles some kind of creativity and spontaneity of research. Back in uh, France, actually, my lab did uh, have a systematic audit because of how big our institution is. I actually welcome that because it helps set the expectation on day one. Mm -hmm. You know, what's frustrating about audit is when people are not keeping a good standard and suddenly there is an audit and you become it become a nightmare. But I think when policy are ch is changing, it's only going to educate people to keep the best practice and keep up with the best practice. And that's part of the training of science anyway, right? That's mm -hmm. the whole reason why you are here as a PhD student because if, if you are if you don't care enough about keeping track of what you do in the lab, then maybe that person shouldn't be in science, right? That yeah. they might that is my opinion. I might sound like a, a harsh professor and <laughs> like who, who doesn't get a job as professor. But like I I genuinely think it's you know, it is a part of the training process. If they wanted a job in the industry in the future, they can talk about GMP and they can talk about keeping a good lab notebook and that make you stand out. And mm -hmm. if you are funded in one of those programs that require good practice of lab keeping, like protocol keeping, and you know, that's that is that is going to make you stand out. And I think it's a win win situation when mm -hmm. when when instruction and expectations are clear mm -hmm. that everyone benefits from it. And I think PhD student has the least to say about this because sometimes they are in the situation of not knowing what is expected from them. And I think that is, to me, not knowing what is expected is much more painful than having a high standard. I'd rather you give me the standard and I follow it. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. 